You know, one of the biggest complaints that I have with Madden, and have had throughout the years, even on Madden 8 PC, which I love so much, there, there's something that's missing from it, but is present in old games back in the 1990s. I'm fixing to show you some clips of a game that was made in 1994. Okay, think about that for a second. 1994. That does something that Madden doesn't do. And it needs to be put into Madden ASAP. The stats for a player, the attributes for a player, need to reflect their play on the field. If you have a Hall of Fame quarterback like Dan Marino, which I'm going to show you in the first clip, then his skills will be very different. His skill set will be very different from a mediocre quarterback like, let's say, we're going to use David Klingler. You probably have not never heard of him, but he was a quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals in the 90s. He was a very subpar quarterback. Good in college, not so much in the NFL. But you're going to see the distinct differences between the two quarterbacks. Their play on the field is very different. And it's very obvious as soon as you see the plays. Now, another thing that I really like about this game is the stats of the players are relevant to their position. One thing about Madden I've always hated is why in the hell does a quarterback have a block rating? Is he really going to be blocking people? Is he going to be sacking the quarterback? I mean, shed tackle? I mean... Very, very few and far between is a quarterback going to make a block. Yeah, maybe here and there, but is it really relevant to their position? Their their job is to throw the football and to make reads. That's their job. Their job is not to sack the quarterback or to break tackles, although you can argue if he's on the scramble, you know, you, you would need some kind of stats there. But let's get to it. I'm going to show you some clips here and break them down and tell you what I like about them. Now, it's no surprise Dan Marino had one of the quickest releases in, in the NFL history. Watch how fast he gets rid of the ball when the blitz comes. He's able to sling it out of there quickly. That was a fast release. He got rid of the ball before the blitz got to him. Now watch him throw a deep throw. Under duress and still able to hit his man right on the numbers. Again, this is a primitive game, but if you look, you can clearly see there's going to be differences between these two players that I'm going to show you. The third pass. He gets to the end of his drop. He steps up and throws to the corner, to the back. Touchdown. But do you see how fast the ball got there? It wasn't a slow process. It got there in a hurry. Now watch this throw. I like the pocket, by the way, just to throw that out there. Now the throw is kind of off target, but look, he, he makes the catch. But it was accurate enough for the receiver to get to it. I want you to remember that play. Because I'm going to show you a d different quarterback that makes the same pass to a another good receiver, but he just can't make the, throw, uh, the catch because the pass was inaccurate. Just notice the speed at which the ball is getting to the receiver, like how fast the ball is moving through the air and, and getting there. Another touchdown here. The main thing I want you to focus on is the, the velocity, the speed at the, which the ball is traveling. All right, now let's go look at the stats for the for Marino. Let's see what his attributes are in this game. Now, he's in a normal condition. When you have excellent condition, your stats go up a little bit. Passing speed, 81. Pass control, 75. Pass, pass accuracy, 63. Avoid rush, 69. Coolness, 81. Those are pretty decent stats for a quarterback, especially the passing speed, which is his best attribute. And that's what he was known for. And look at his running. He was one of the worst running quarterbacks of all time, but he was good in the pocket. He could avoid the rush. That 69 avoid rush 
is what he was good at in the pocket. He was not a scrambling quarterback by any means, and that's why his running ability is very bad. And that's accurate. Now, let's look at another quarterback. A quarterback that is not good. A subpar quarterback. David Klingler for the Cincinnati Bengals. Look at his passing speed 44. Pass control 31. Pass accuracy 31. Avoid rush 38. Coolness 38. Obviously not as good as Dan Marino. But how will his play be on the field? Well, let's find out. I'm using the same exact plays that I used for Marino. Now I want you to see how long the ball takes to get there. Look how long the ball, and look how inaccurate it was. The receiver jumped and couldn't even make the catch. It was overthrown over his head, and it, and it was very slow. The passing speed was horrible. And when you saw Marino throw it, it got there in a hurry. David Klingler, it hung in the air, hung in the air forever. Again, now look at the receiver. He's wide open, but he has to adjust his, his position to catch it. He had to adjust his route because the pass was off target. These are things that are so basic that I do not see in Madden. I have not seen in Madden. Passing speeds and how it reflects the game on the field. Look how long the ball takes there. And remember that Marino dive, the pass that the receiver dove? This guy couldn't get it, could he? It's a different quarterback, a different skill set, or lack of skills, that you could say. David Klinger was not a good quarterback. He wasn't elite. Maybe in Marino, you would try to force the ball here, but if you threw it as David Klinger, you'd most likely get picked off. This is the distinction that I want to see in future football games. Something that distinguishes a star from a crappy player. This is back in 1994. And the Blitz. Remember when Marino was able to get the ball out of there? That could have been actually intercepted there. But it didn't even get past the line of scrimmage. His release was slow. Marino's was not. Wide open, he's able to make the catch here. Even if you have a subpar quarterback in this game, you if your mechanics are correct, if you step into your throws, and notice how every time I throw the ball, I'm stepping up a little bit. If you don't do that in this game, your passes will not be as... You won't, you won't complete as many uh, passes. Sometimes you can really complete ridiculous passes if you do this. I've played this game enough to know that. Of course, you could try it yourself, too. This is so primitive. This... This is as primitive as it, well, not as it gets, but, and again, can't make the catch. His accuracy isn't as good as Marino. Like I said, this game is so primitive, guys. This is something that should be in Madden. Passing speeds, and it should reflect the game on the field. I It should take longer for a quarterback that doesn't have a great arm for the ball. It should take longer for the ball to get there. And it should, and the receiver should have to adjust routes if the pass is inaccurate. This is something that's missing, and something that needs to be in there because it gives the game kind of like all pro. It gives it personality. Look at that wide open. See how slow the ball gets there. You could read War and Peace before you catch the ball. This game is a, it, it, it may be primitive. It's very old, but it, isn't it sad that it does some things that are basic better than Madden? I want your guys' thoughts on this. What do you guys think about passing speeds and, and attributes that actually are relevant to the player's position? Those are the two things that I want to talk about in this video that I wanted to get across. Like, the attributes reflect the gameplay on the field, as I showed between Marino and Klingler. Two very different quarterbacks, two different skill sets, two different results on the field. If you play Madden, you'll notice... It just, it just isn't the same. You can drop back with any quarterback in Madden and still have great success. Not so much in 1994, though, huh?